Hi, meet Kayla. This is Anthony. And Hannah. We wanted to discuss Frederick Winslow Taylor and how his research in the late 1800s had an impact on scientific management as we know it today. What is scientific management? Wikipedia lists it as the theory of management that analyzes and synthesizes workflows. Its main objective is improving economic efficiency, especially labor productivity. According to Sailor.org, Taylor was born on March 20, 1856 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Franklin and Emily Taylor. He attended Phillips Academy and was accepted to Harvard Law. Because of his failing eyesight, he left Harvard and in 1873 he became a machinist apprentice at the Enterprise Hydraulic Works in Philadelphia. He eventually took a job at Midvale Steel Company and discovered a separation between employees and management. According to the evolution of management thought, at Midvale Steel, he discovered two types of soldiering. Natural soldiering, which is the natural instinct and tendency of men to take it easy, can be overcome by inspiring or forcing workers to come to their mark. Systematic soldiering, which comes from workers' more intricate thought and reasoning caused by their relations with other men. Taylor had three reasons why he believed people soldiered. If employees worked faster, their jobs would be done, and then they would be laid off. From experience of being paid by peace, if employees produced more, management would likely cut the peace rate governing their wages, and they would end up doing more work for the same pay. Employees adhered to the rule of thumb works method handed down from generation to generation. After Taylor distinguished the two types of soldiering and why employees tend to partake in soldiering, he began to distinguish scientific management. He used time study, which involved using a stopwatch, weight scale, and a measuring tape to measure how far employees move with their equipment. Scientific management was then formed into two phases. Analysis, where the job is broken into elementary movements and the non-essential phases are removed. The remaining movements are then examined to determine the least wasteful way of performing the job. The second was synthesis. The elementary movements are combined into the correct sequence to determine time and exact method for performing a job. Putting scientific management into use in turn caused improvement in tools, materials, methods, and the ultimate standardization of all elements surrounding and accompanying a job. Taylor's work led to many improvements in the management world, and according to nwlink.com, these are some of the great strides that management has made to improve the workforce to what it has become today. In 1946, organization development Kurt Lewin's research discovered that this learning is best facilitated when there is conflict between immediate and concrete experience and a detached analysis within the individual. Nine, hygiene and motivational factors are introduced, which are based on the hierarchy of needs. They must be present in the job before motivators can be used to stimulate the workers. This concludes our very brief description of Frederick Taylor and his impact on today's scientific management. Thank you for your time.